In this show, we're talking simulators, and I've got a guest, Jaden Comright, who's going to join me to talk about, it's a race driver, how he uses the simulator to train himself, because there's a lot of questions about simulators. So I thought I'd cover this with an interview, and uh, yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. Jaden, welcome to the Race Driver Coach Show. Uh, thanks for kind of stopping by, but you're having. No, thanks for having your, me on. We're in your room, right? By the looks of it, uh, it's like the spare room where I have the sim. I actually wanted to turn it into a um, like a workout room and everything, especially when we had the lockdown. So I was like, oh, if I had time, I'd yeah. clean the room up, put like a workout bench stuff in here. But I haven't really had time to clean the room out and then like kind of purchase everything. So it's still kind of a bit of a mess. Yeah, but okay. All right. It's, so yeah, it's a it, the simulator room. <laughs> it is a sim, and that's what we're going to talk about. So the main theme of this episode is obviously to show drivers really what we're doing with the sim to help you improve as a driver. And I know you do a lot of sim now, so it's really you're a great person to talk to on that side. Um, so first of all, just run us through what you've raced and tell us about yourself, so everyone knows who you are. Uh, well, for my racing. I started pretty much, well, I did, I got a scholarship in 2014 and I did some stuff for two years in California and single seater stuff. But then the main thing was when I jumped into Italian F4 in 2016. Let me stop you straight then, away. Scholarship. What was it? It's cool. still going on. It's the VMB driver development. All right. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you did the scholarship, did a few years racing. And then when did it get serious, you say? Uh, when I went to Europe to do F4 in yep. 2016 except i mean i did not i went from the scholarship so it was kind of like i got used to a regional championship and then essentially jumped into a top international championship so it wasn't the smoothest but no, started training working hard and then it kind of all came back around when i did uh f3 fi f3 asia like two pole positions one win third in the championship so five podiums out of whatever how many races 15 races but it yeah. was that was when everything kind of came around and i actually started like being taught the proper way to be a racing driver and what you need to do on a weekend and stuff like that yeah when asia went well um mm -hmm. it would have been interesting to try to come back and do fif3 but it just wasn't really possible with Budget. support especially so and the budget required to do anything in the for in a formula one paddock with single seaters so i made the switch and did the Italian Carrera Cup Championship and switched to GT cars. And the nice thing with the Porsche is that essentially it's kind of, the format is still very similar to a single seater. You don't share the car, there's no BOP. It's still a sprint race and you do standing starts. So it's pretty much just an F3 race, but yeah. with a Porsche. So different it was, driving uh, style though. It was, yeah, it is a very different driving style. There's a lot more to think. I was actually very surprised when I first tested it because especially with all the suspension travel and the body roll and stuff like that it was like there was a lot more that you had to just kind of think about fighting for the championship right in italy yeah i mean it was uh, very close unfortunately i mean i think i mean i think nine they had nine podiums or something yeah but we got a bit unlucky every time we had a a chance to be very very front but yeah we came down to the very last race and unfortunately uh I took a rock through the radiator and oh, I was man. fighting for the, the championship. So uh, it knocked do. me out to P, P4, but it was actually quite close. It was like 10 points between everybody or something. So it was a very good year. And I mean, it was a debut for sports cars yep. and I was the only rookie fighting. So, I mean, it was definitely a good. very good year. Was, and then, yeah, no, no complaints. No complaints. Hey, it's your own fault for hitting a rock. You should have avoided it. I mean, I was like pushing somebody. It was leaving uh, Ascari, and I was pushing the person I was fighting for the championship, and he dropped two wheels off, and it just took the radiator out. Actually, <laughs> that's something that is a tactic in touring cars. He probably didn't do it on purpose, but it's a big thing in British touring cars. Is if people are following you, um, Silverstone used to be great for this because the the, cu the curbs were so flat. Somebody's following you, just cut the corner on the apex, chuck as many stones as you can at them. And you weren't really thinking about the rad. You were thinking about hitting the windscreen. It's just one of them tactics. But yeah, I don't think he would have done it on purpose, by the way. But um, you just reminded me then of something that somebody taught me a few years ago. And it works quite well. Uh, I might <laughs> need to take note of that. 
especially yeah. at Monza because the stones are massive. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, they are. Okay, so you did that. Was fighting up the front. Then what? Uh, then last year I was supposed to do the full um, Super Cup Championship with the same team because I ran with Dynamic Motorsports and uh, the Italian Championship. Yeah. And then I was supposed to do the full Super Cup, but then obviously COVID hit everybody. Yeah. So then all the schedules changed. I was actually originally still going to do the full like championship once they rescheduled it, but I flew to Europe and then I got sent straight back, even though I had a, a I visa. That. I guess the, the they weren't too happy where I landed. So yeah. I got sent back and then, the, yeah, that was that. But I mean, thankfully I was able to do the last three rounds. It was kind of like a similar experience to how it was with my F4. I mean, I ran Barcelona, Spa and Monza yeah. and Barcelona, I got called like on the Monday. <laughs> I've yeah. never been even been to Spain in my life. <laughs> so I just showed up and never seen anything all by yeah. myself and did that. And then even same thing with Spa, we showed up, uh, free practice got rained out uh basically never drove the track in, or anything yeah until qualifying but i mean we were able to qualify p11 i think eight like eight tenths off something so it's still i That's mean obviously great, i don't want to be i want to be not p10 but and then uh the main one last year is that uh we did the i did the career cup race at uh lamar mm -hmm. with the large grid i think 54 cars or something like that yeah finished p9 i think we had a bit more pace to finish top five but mate that's great thanks for the overview uh it gives people an idea at the level you're at and what we're talking about today is obviously the sim um mm -hmm. and i want to first ask before you show us your sim and everything what do you use it for because i think most people know but there's a lot of drivers watching this and they yeah they do some online racing and things but it's how can i really use this as a training tool so that's what I want to get down to, really. So you did some Porsche races and things, right, with the championship mm -hmm. uh, online? Yeah. Um, what would you say you go to the sim for? Mm -hmm. I think. Okay, I think the main thing for the sim is that it's like it's not necessarily driving a car that feels exactly one hundred percent accurate because I don't think there's any sim, maybe outside of like a Formula One or Works program sim that's like they own in-house that's going to feel exactly like how it would be in the real car mm -hmm. but i think the main thing is like it's the uh, getting your brain to activate in the correct way because i mean it's, you still need to find the lap time and drive what you're given and just perform and extract all the lap time you can so it's just really about the mental training keeping your brain thinking the correct way about where you could adjust your driving where you could adjust like just yeah overall how to find lap time essentially because every car in reality is going to drive different i mean even different setups are going to drive different so it's just really to me i feel like it's great practice for understanding like where you can find lap time how to improve your driving and then even then forming on it so like hitting your optimal lap being able to actually yeah. run a proper lap and not be like four tenths off your optimal you got and it. just the mental side of driving essentially do you get nervous before the big race is online? Is it like similar kind of or buzzed? I think it's worse online, honestly, because nah, I don't it? get net coded in real life. <laughs> yeah, there is that. <laughs> there is that. I'm always yeah. scared because it's like someone gets close and it's like you could still be a few meters off each other and you just get sent in the walls and yeah. you don't have the same, you can't turn your head in the sim because I don't have VR, I just have a monitor. So I feel like there's a lot more blind. Mm -hmm. And even then, you might not make contact with someone, but the sim will just say you did. So I um, honestly feel a bit more worried. You can lean on each other in real life on the sim. It's a lot more you can't. So it's, I feel like it's worse. It is worse. And actually even in the mind, it's worse because all you've got, you're only using really one and a half senses. And actually you're hearing as well. You're, you're using on a sim, obviously for gear shifts and things, but it's 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 basically you're trying to do everything so consciously so if you're trying to break for a corner then it's not a case of i'm going to break later and i'm going to feel what the car's doing and adjust my left foot for that it's like no i've got to wait for a lockup and then adjust and that yeah. works mine so much harder than when you're you can feel the bumps you know that you go over a bump and you break and how it reacts and catching a slide mm -hmm. is easier in the real life as well um especially when you're using a wheel that isn't a direct drive it's it's just yeah it's difficult so i think mm -hmm. the uh finish rates a lot harder but it is it is exactly the same because you 
on the mental side when with nerves and things you've got this big race it's still going to be televised somewhere everyone's watching it you against other drivers that you know are good so it, it still fires up all the same emotions for me anyway yeah i feel like the funny thing is that we always joke about the sim it's like that it's like all the actual stressful side of driving in a real race are there yeah. but you're not in a real car so you don't get the same satisfaction that you get yeah. when you're driving it's like all the hard parts without the, without <laughs> the satisfaction so it's just so like every, as you can see everybody especially when we do the real driver races everybody's trying very hard in it because i mean yeah. everybody's a racing driver and they want bragging rights that's right so you work very hard and you don't win anything out of it mm -hmm. you just you just want to beat everybody else yeah and then <laughs> right it's now, the next race. yeah and yeah that was the other thing on the sim there's no downtime Mm -hmm. especially when we did the real driver series because i mean in real racing we at least have one week between events yeah. but in the sim they could they sometimes are putting multiple in a week yeah. so it's like it's really a, you practice do a race and you have a one day to prepare for the next one and it's just knocking them out yeah every other day so do you use so. it before going to a race weekend if the tracks on i racing or whatever do you use it to prep for a race weekend uh yeah i yeah. i do the best like the best that i can to prep and then Hopefully I could also get some friends that are very fast on the sim to hop in there too. So it's like kind of like you could push each other and then just use it to prepare. Yeah. I think even for the the mock career cup race, that was actually what helped a lot because I did the actually the 24 hours on iRacing with some friends last year. And I mean mm -hmm. essentially pounded out 500, 600 laps of Lamar on the sim. Yeah. So then it was kind of like I showed up there in real life and it was close enough that like maybe it wasn't the, exactly the same, but the yeah. con the the concept of how you go fast at the circuit i understood so i was able to just translate it to the the real car and i think that's what gave us such a good performance yeah it does it's still the same corners that are important for lap time and still the same bit about that corner the same part about that corner if it's exit or whatever that's still the same isn't it so yeah it really works how about racecraft do you practice that defending overtaking yeah I try to. Um, I think on the sim, I'm definitely less aggressive than the than real life. But that was also like what I was saying before with the the net code. Yeah. Um, I don't think I I don't drive on the sim enough, especially at like a high level, that I have that like because you don't have the same senses that you do in a real car. So it's yeah. kind of like you just have to know and like know what what margins you have to work with with like contact and overtaking. And I haven't really understood it. Yeah. But I do try to do race craft, or at least in practice sessions with other drivers, we could where it's not actually worth anything. You could just kind of mess around, and if you crash, you could reset. But yep. Yep. I I do think it could be good for race craft. It's just it's a bit it's, there's too many question marks sometimes regarding if you're going to have contact or not. So it's a bit hard to cut it within the the margins you would in a real race. Yeah, yeah, and you you do need triple screen as well if you're going to be wheel to wheel. To be fair. And it, um, we've done it in single seaters a lot with the F4 drivers. Um, there's a race team, Van Amersfoort, and they've got their simulators side by side. And the drivers, they do do racecraft before they go to a track. And mm -hmm. it's funny because you can hear them arguing when one's pulled a move off that they say is not realistic. And, oh, you can't do that in real life. And it's funny, but then the other dude then makes it his mission to do it to that person in real life and say, see, I can do it. So it becomes <laughs> it, it's hilarious to watch. But yeah, I, I love it. It's like just knowing, OK, turn one, six and eight, you must defend everything else. You can just coach, concentrate on. You don't need to close up. You can just concentrate on getting the perfect line. And it's them kind of things you can really train. So I love it for racecraft on that side. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. I think that would be a very good way to use it, actually. So, yeah. I mean, maybe I'll, yeah, maybe I'm going to take note of that. And if I go to a race, try to do that because that, yeah. that is definitely something you don't have to really, you could use it to not have to be in the, to study what you have to do in the race. Just yeah. be like, oh, this is just, this is it. This is the only places that overtakes are possible. Yeah. So that's, I think that's definitely something very, very helpful for yeah. if you're racing, especially if you're leading. Yeah. It makes it much easier. Of course it does yeah and actually that's it there's another part of it is the mental side where yeah okay controlling nerves but it's can i be consistent do i look in my mirrors too much them kind of things i find you can work on perfectly with the sim it's all there it's all there for you to mm -hmm. in fact it's even worse with the sim because you if you want you can have the delta right there in front of your eyes and you're so yeah. fixated on it that it always makes you over or under drive it knocks you off um off your peak performance normally if it's in quality and stuff like that 
so yeah, it, yeah it's fascinating actually how it works so i think it's one of the best mental tools we've got for training i really mm -hmm. do um it's the closest we can get and it's getting better and better with vr once vr becomes like a pair of glasses and it's easy and it and the actual display is crystal clear and not pixelated um i think it'll be really good it'll be a whole mm -hmm. new world we'll have then two careers we'll have an online career and a, and a real career i'm sure it's going to go that way yeah it's more already sponsors, going that probably way. more sponsors on the <laughs> off online because they can change it. They can put it anywhere they want. Um, it, yeah, it's it's going to be big, I think, in about 10 years or so, I'm sure. Yeah, especially then because you have, like, the ones where they have, like, concept series, but in re there's no – they haven't built a car, did anything in reality, so maybe yeah. somebody wants yeah. to run a series, but they haven't actually built a real car or they don't yeah. have the means to build a real championship. They could build their concept into a virtual environment and then host it because I think I've seen a few of those now too. Yeah. Also, like BMW, say they're coming out with a brand new three series. It's like, right, we're going to do a, it's going to come out next year, but we can have a racing series on iRacing with it. God, man, that's marketing at its best. It doesn't cost them much either in, in respect to it. So, because the iRacing would be more than happy to cover it. So, yeah, I think yeah, that's going to be a big they, space. You have to buy so the car. I would say <laughs> keep going, keep training, keep getting better because it will be a second earner. Because, you know, even streaming now, you're earning money off um, Call of Duty. So I think racing will be the same, I'm sure. Well, there's people doing mm -hmm. it already. It's not It's not new. Okay, right. Show us your kit then, my brother. What you got? What actually uh, right. sim setup have you got? I have to thank uh, Track Racer for the, the, the chassis because they, they helped me out a lot by pro providing the chassis for me. And yeah. uh, it's been amazing. I wish I could have shown it more in some of the e-races and in some of the streams and stuff but unfortunately just due to the when most of the series took place earlier in 2020 everything was back ordered so i didn't actually have anything in time for when we did the real series but yeah no uh, thanks thanks to them the sim's been amazing ever since it got delivered and i was able to put everything together okay but uh the main thing for the steering i'm using the simi cube pro 2 yep direct drive with um, the cube controls wheel and then the pedals i'm running the um, houston Feld ultimates you can't the... get much better than that what, what do you reckon to um wrap around screen like that compared to curve screen i mean sorry compared to triple is curved good oh yeah the I, I like the curve screen i think they have a new one that came out that's even more curved than this one like i saw it the other day and it was like significantly more curved but yeah uh, it's like a give or take this is like it doesn't wrap around quite as much so i think you have a little bit still you lose a bit come. of the depth perception yeah but at the same time it's way less intensive on the computer when i was talking with friends to build pcs and yeah. it's way easier to set up because it's essentially you just plug it in and it works so okay from that front it's easy the, the other the only downside to it, it's, it's more expensive than if you do triples probably Got it's just that maybe your pc could be a little bit less intense if you do it this way so okay i mean i like it i'm not a pc guy so i mean if something went wrong on my triples i would probably have to call someone so I'd, yeah. at least in that sense it's much easier for me right but so that, that track I wouldn't be against rig triples. looks really rigid is it holding the simu cube because simu cube direct drive is a monster does it hold oh, it quite yeah. rigid doesn't even like budget at all it's really good <laughs> no vibrations or anything that's really cool yeah right? even even the pedals like it's like nothing like doesn't flex at all i think the difference with the, this one is that the for a track racer they use uh like i think they use the beams they use are a bit beefier than some of the other companies yeah but it's like even this whole like plate up here is just all like steel Absolutely so it's, it's a bit heavy but for i mean it's cool. definitely a rock and it's not going to move that's so. really good it's really important because i've been on some and they're wobbling around and it yeah it just makes it bad so talking about um direct drive and then pedals you've got the hydraulics um what's the difference between something i've got which is i don't know if you can see it actually people it's the um fanatec club sport with the fanatec club sport uh pedals as well i mean they're pretty good but i know i need a direct drive and i know i need um the hydraulics as well what would you say does it make your drive better faster safer more consistent um i think the biggest jump is because uh, during the covid 
lockdown before I had all the stuff delivered, I was actually using clips for pedals and then the CSL Elite F1 wheel for yep. most of the E-series stuff. And then it was that the biggest difference was the brakes, especially in like certain cars, like the the cup car and I racing. And then some of the other like GT cars where it's like the biggest point is the modulation of the pedal. It was yeah. like unbelievable. Like I could break so much later and so much more consistent. Mm -hmm. um, the direct drive, it's like depends on the car. But I mean, at the same time, it's kind of just it, you find less time in the direct drive, but at the same time, it just makes it much easier to drive. You're much yeah. more consistent. And then you, even then you have that ability to find uh, the last few tenths out of it just because you have more confidence. You aren't worried about the car just randomly oversteering. It kind of gives you the feedback beforehand. Yeah, It's still not like a real car where you feel it in the seat, but it's definitely like to catch oversteer and to just drive on the limit. It's just a much more accurate with the direct drive. So. I noticed that I used I used one at um, a simulator center I was working at, and I used it for like a month or so. And the I rating and safety rating went straight up. It's like so much better. I was like, oh, I'm not crashing now because when you did get a drift on, in anything that was not direct drive, you always overcorrected, and then it was impossible to un overcorrect and catch it or not easy. Mm -hmm. You were going off, but this thing you were just drifting and like holding, like oh, okay. It's as if it's yeah. got so many more pickup points. It's like that kind of thing, really. So it's just smooth, and you can actually feel what's going on. Right. So yeah, I've got to get one. I've got to spend. Yeah, you feel time. like you could you could be react. Uh, you could react to an oversteer, whereas like when I had the belt driven wheel, it's pretty much like I would visually see that it looked like something was about to happen. So then you would have to anticipate the slide, yeah. which I mean, sometimes it was it was right, but at the same time, when you're just kind of always waiting to be yeah. like you have to like have a safety net so you don't crash the car. It's a completely different. I mean, yeah. especially at like street circuits and stuff. I feel like we're in, I mean, it's the best when you're running at a circuit like that. Cause you, you have like some leeway, but mm -hmm. if you have like a big moment, you're going to crash the car. But yeah, when you have a direct drive, it's just, you don't even feel worried. It's just kind of like, you know, it's pretty much happening, but yeah. I don't think it's all the, the kit though. Cause you still have to be able to drive. Cause I think of if course. you gave someone yeah. a, if you give someone the best sim set, but they didn't, it's not going to make them faster. They have and I've, to... Yeah, mate, I've had people competing at championship level with the Logitech out of PC world. You know, you just buy it off the shelf one as well. So it is possible, um, but it's just a whole lot easier and the experience is better with what you've got. I love it. It just yeah. feels like a race car that, or more like a race car and you can, yeah, play with it a lot more. Yeah, especially the pedals. It's And for like... Um my purpose and in the lots of the other drivers or even ones that are aspiring to become drivers or yeah. in karting and stuff. It's really about the feeling. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I had friends that are really, really fast on like the Logitech stuff and things like that. And they were actually like very, very fast on iRacing. Mm -hmm. But like they said, the way they drive the sim and the way they drive the real car is completely different. So it wasn't really a training tool for them anymore. They just did it because they were competitive, but in terms yeah. of techniques, they didn't, it wasn't none of them carried over because the way you drive on a wheel like that is completely different than how you would drive a real car. Gotcha. No, that's a nice, nice piece of kit, man. It really is. Um, so are you doing some racing now soon or not? Or are you too busy? Uh, hopefully, moving around? But we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, then yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't know what's happening in 2021. I'm just kind of going okay. with the flow, hoping uh, to just do some keeping races the phone and, like this. Yeah, Ready. keeping keeping my phone in my pocket at all times. But yeah, we'll see. I mean, it was a uh, it's been positive all the years up till now, and then last year, even with COVID, we had some positive results. But it's just really down to what's possible because it's kind of messy. Even the yeah, traveling, it's, it's oh, like right. maybe it's I did a championship in Europe, but for me, I don't live in. I'm not European, so it's already a an added yeah. step of trying to even get there. Nor am I. We're British now, yeah. believe it or not. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden it's made it so difficult. Um, like uh, the job list now, before I go away, the checklist of things I've got to do is like 12 deep now. I mean, before it was just book a hotel, a flight, rental car. Now it's all the paperwork. It's the COVID tests and the COVID tests when you get back and then the invite letters from everyone, from the country you're going to and the race team. It's like, pfft. and I'm away every week virtually. So yeah, it's quite a challenge at the minute, but Anyway, um, how old are you now? I'm going to turn, what, what month is it, May now? 
Yeah. Oh, wait, no, it's not. It's, it's April. still April. <laughs> yeah. I'm say in a month, I'll turn 22. Oh, mate, you've got... <laughs> in the end of, like at the end of May. You've got another 40 years yet. I'm sure we can get a career in that time. I hope so, but I need to find a find work so I could survive until then. Yeah, which is what yes. I'm trying to do now. I want to try to get some stuff set up. So, like I said, if as long as I don't don't die because I don't have food, <laughs> I could still try as long as I want to try to race. Yeah. I just need to get something flexible. So if I get a call, I can't. It's not like I'm working at a desk job and I'm like yeah. I quit. I have I have to race one weekend this weekend. I quit. <laughs> Mate, loads of people do. Now you got to hustle, but I'm sure something, Jack or May will find something, I'm sure. But um, that's it. Thanks for this this interview, if you want to call it that, quick chat. Um, it's been a pleasure, and it's good to know how racers are using the simulator. So, um, yeah, um, thanks for your time, my friend. Thanks for having me on, Enzo. And no uh, hopefully it helps with some people that are interested in the sim stuff, but they weren't sure exactly or they have some doubts about things. Yeah, it will. It will. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Enzo.